Welcome to Lockdown Embryology. I'm Professor Alice Roberts and this is the fifth video in the series and it's about how the embryo folds in the third and fourth week of development after the egg was fertilised. I'm starting off by drawing the embryo at just the beginning of the third week of development at about day 16 and we're looking down on the germ disc. You can see the primitive streak towards the tail or caudal end of the embryo and that's forming the new layer inside this embryo so we're transforming a bilaminar into a trilaminar germ disc. And then what we'll see over subsequent days is that this germ disc is going to lengthen and we'll start to see a bit more shape appearing. We're seeing a couple of depressions there. But at the moment, this is still a flat disc. And what we're going to have to do over this third and fourth week of development is convert that flat disc into something that's shaped a lot more like a body. So now I've moved on to day 18, you can see the neural plate forming, which is going to zip up into the neural tube and you can see those bead-like structures either side of that forming neural tube as well. Those are the somites. They are forming out of the paraxial mesoderm. These are body segments which will go on to make all sorts of tissues, bones, muscles. Here the neural tube is fusing as we move on to day 22 so we're just into the fourth week of development here. Just filling in the somites there. But this time I want to really concentrate on the whole shape of the embryo and what's happening to it because by this point you can see that perhaps something interesting has happened and it's not really a disc anymore. I'm going to draw it from another view now. I'm going to draw it from a, a side-on view and attempt to get an impression of the three-dimensional shape of the embryo as we move through the third and into the fourth weeks of development. So backtracking a bit, there's the disc. So day 17, we've got this very flat germ disc. It's just about a millimetre in length at the moment. It's a really tiny embryo. And you can see that by day 19, it's starting to bulk up a bit. It's starting to fold. And it's that process of new relation which is helping to drive that. So you can see it folding. The, the head and the tail are tucking under. So we call this cephalocaudal folding along the long axis of the embryo but actually it's folding around the sides as well so the sides are tucking in so again I just fill in those same I always think they look like peas in a pod at this point in development and there's a set of those on both sides and you can see where the amniotic cavity is attaching to the embryo as well that it's very much tucked underneath now that attachment of the amnion the membrane around the cavity when I say the underneath that's corresponding to the front of your body, we'd say the ventral surface of the embryo. And at this point, day 22, the neuropores are still open at the head end and the tail end, and the embryo is about three millimetres long. And it keeps on growing with new somites appearing. Day 24, you've got around 13 somites. By day 25, those have multiplied to about 20. The neural tube is closing, but at this point, the posterior or caudal neuropore and the anterior or cranial neuropore are still open. They've got this other structure appearing up towards the head end of the embryo, a sort of bulge tucked underneath what eventually will be the head. And as we get to day 26, the anterior neuropore is closed now, the caudal one is closing, the embryo is about four millimetres long. That little spot I just drew is something called the otic placode, which forms part of the ear. And there are a series of ridges, three on each side now, forming up in what is the neck region of the developing embryo as well. So that's what you looked like 26 days after fertilisation. There are those somites. You've got about 27 somites on each side now. And I've just labelled up that bulge in the neck region. That's the heart bulge or sometimes called the pericardial bulge. And I've also labelled up these ridges in the neck region. They are called pharyngeal arches. They lie on either side of the pharynx. 
So now we've had a good look at the features on the outside of the embryo. I'm just going to strip that all away and now we imagine we are cutting through, producing a longitudinal section through this embryo so we can see what's going on on the inside. And we're interested in what's happened to the endoderm, which was the lowest layer, the most ventral layer of the trilaminar germ disc. Now, that's been kind of trapped on the inside of the embryo now, forming a tube which is connected still to the yolk sac on the outside of the embryo's body. So I'm going to use the traditional colours again. We'll colour in the lining of that endoderm tube in yellow and we can see then that that is continuous with the lining of the yolk sac. And there's that strange little diverticulum, that little outpouching that projects into the connecting stalk as well. Now in blue there's the ectoderm so the uppermost or most dorsal layer of the embryo but in fact now that's wrapped all around the outside of the embryo and also the mesoderm in orange and remember that the mesoderm's inside the embryo but also outside it lining the outside of the yolk sac and in fact the amnion as well. So this tube of endoderm which is now right inside the embryo that is the gut tube and we start to name the parts of it as well. The cranial part of it is the foregut. The middle part of it is the midgut, and that's the part attached to the yolk sac via, as you can see there, the vitellin duct. And then the end of the gut tube is the hind gut. And you can see that that's got this strange little protrusion pushing out from it into the connecting stalk. It's called the allanteris. Up in the neck region of the embryo, I'm just colouring in this structure that is the primitive heart tube that has already formed. And in fact, this tiny little, very primitive looking heart is already beating in week four. So now we've had a really good look at a longitudinal section through this embryo. Now let's look at a section which is at 90 degrees to that. So a transverse section, a cross section through the midgut, the vitellin duct and the yolk sac and in fact we've already seen this because I drew it in lockdown embryology 4 there's the midgut there's the vitellin duct attaching to the yolk sac on the outside and in this view you can see how the ectoderm has wrapped around the embryo now so it's no longer on the top just on the dorsal side it's completely encasing the embryo and the amniotic cavity has been pulled right around the embryo as well so the folding that has happened by this point in a cephalocaudal but also in a lateral direction has pulled that amniotic cavity all around the embryo and there's that little heart beating away. So embryonic folding during week three and four is really important in shaping the embryo. We started off with a flat three layer trilaminar germ disc and we've ended up with a rounded body, which is really a series of nested cylinders, an endoderm tube in a mesoderm tube, in an ectoderm tube. So ectoderm now covers all of the outside of the body of the embryo, and that will form your epidermis. And then the amniotic cavity has been pulled around the embryo so that it's attaching now to the, the front surface, the ventral surface of the embryo. The embryo is now floating within this bubble, this little pond of amniotic fluid, and it can continue developing in that protected space inside the womb. The connecting stalk and the vitellin duct are also pushed together on the front of the body on the ventral surface. The connecting stalk will be the umbilical cord eventually. So this has been an important couple of weeks of development where we've set up the shape of the embryo's body and now that we've done that, we can start to look at how different organ systems develop. So that's coming up next. Thank you for watching Lockdown Embryology with me, Alice Roberts. Please like, please share and see you next time.